Hello and welcome to Learn Web Dev. Today we will be building an image slider which will look like this. So <clears throat> you have your container and some buttons and when you press on next the next um, image will be shown. The images are stored in a in an array and by pressing next and previous you're just incrementing and decrementing a variable inside a for loop which is connected to the array. And as you can see, when you this is the first image. When you press all the way to the last image and press once more, it will go back to the first. Also, the same with the back side. So it will loop all the way through. All right, so let's start. All right, the first thing we need is the basic HTML structure. If you have VS code, uh, Visual Studio Code, you can just type um, exclamation mark and press tab and this will appear. Here you can give the, the title can be image slider for example and um, you also need an HTML file, CSS file and JavaScript file and first you will create the HTML file and inside this HTML file you will f we will first create a div with the ID container. Inside this container we will have an image tag with the class, oh no no no, with the ID image <clears throat> and the source will be, I have these images in a folder as you can see here. These are the seven images, I've just named them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and um, we will just add the first image dot jpeg like this then we will create two buttons one with the id previous and inside it we will type in previous and another button with the id next and also set the display text to next then we also need to link our style sheet we do this by typing in link rel style sheet style sheet and the href <coughs> style.css also at the bottom of our body tag we will add a script tag with the source of our javascript file which is main.js and this is basically the whole structure we can save it and look at it here of course the image is just the without any height or width value, so it's just a full picture and you have your two buttons here. So, <clears throat> let's add the styling. So, for the styling we will first set the HTML background color to be a little bit darker, for example this one, and also set the height to 100%. So, if we save it and look at it now, it's still the same, just the background color is black. Then we will start styling the container where the image is inside of and we will set it to have a height of 500 pixels, a width of 500 pixels, background color can be white, the margin will be 100 pixels from the top and on the sides it will be centered um, the text align alignment will be center and the border will be 5 pixels solid and black. This is just some basic styling, you can add whatever you want. But the image will be 500 pixel, just as the just the same size as the container and the width will also be 500 pixels. Then we have our buttons and because we only have two buttons and we will style them almost identical. We can just um, select the button element as a whole and don't need, we don't need to set the ID or set a class. But usually you would set a class. You know what, let's just do this. <clears throat> set the class to button. And also here, so just have two classes and you can access them like this. Set the button margin to zero and auto. The height will be 50 pixels, width 
will be 150 pixels and the margin 10 pixels so it isn't as um, cramped together save it and refresh and now we have this now we have the previous and next button and your image so now let's switch to the javascript so first we need to get our preview button and our next button we can do this by just um, uh, yes like this setting document dot get element by id and just inputting the id we had in our buttons in this case it's next and next and previous it's this this id that you need to add there and add a semicolon behind it <clears throat> and then we also need to set an array and inside this array i will just copy this inside this array we will have all of our image names like this you will just type in the image name inside these um, quotes have the image folder so the, the um, path and the name separate them by a comma and just add all of them <clears throat> next we will set an id uh, i'm sorry next we'll set a variable name it i and set it to zero <clears throat> and then we can just add the event listener for both of both of the buttons so just type in um uh wait wait wait, wait. i'm always doing this too fast next no next and the preview and then we can just select both lines while holding alt and pressing the next line and adding the event listener so we save some time the click method and the uh, the click type and the function like this and now we have two of our buttons so this will be the next button and this will be the preview button and i don't know how much my viewers know about the array but i will link some um, resources to arrays and all of this stuff because now we will um, loop through this array so first we will set an if statement so if i this i is bigger than r dot length so our array dot length the length is um six so arrays always start at zero so this is zero one two three four five six we can test this by console logging the array like this no not like this array um dot length i'm sorry uh why it's R oh i didn't save sorry um yes now you can see the console log r dot length is seven because it's one two three four five six seven items but if i type in r dot uh, r one uh, zero you will get the first image and if i type in six you will get the seventh image so this one so as you can see there are only actually six items inside this array because arrays are zero um, based a uh, zero based index so zero is the first item all right so and when we press on next for example we will just increment the i value it will do the same but with minus for the previous button so if we save and test this now you can see um, nothing happens that's because we didn't actually um um get the, the we, we didn't ha um get the element the image element so this is what we do now we will set the so we'll just write in document dot get element by id and just type in the id you gave your um image tag which is id in my case 
and then set the source to to R I. So this means we can also do this here. This just means that we will get the image um, the image element with the source. So the source is what displays the image. If I would have typed in two in here, it will be the second image. So if we increment this um, number or this um, path and image name, we will a uh, file name. We will get the next image, and this is what we're doing with um, the I and this line at the end. We're setting on button click. So when we press next, we're actually incrementing I by one. So the the um, the default image is the first one. So it's zero, and when we press I, it increments I by one. So I is actually one and we will get the document by id image so we will get the image element and set its source to array and i so array would be actually one because we incremented zero by one by pressing next and this one this variable will be increment by one so it will be one inside here if we increment it again it will be two if we press on next again it will be three and so on and Three zero one two three would be this image. So um, yes, and set it to i, so it will get the value which is saved in i, which will be this one. And yeah, we can try this now. If I press next, we will get the next image. But there's one problem. When we get to the last image, it will just um, keep going, and there we have a blank image because no image is. Um, selected. If we press previous, the same happens here. That's why we need to add a if statement. So if i is bigger than array.length minus 1, because as you know, array is zero based index. So <clears throat> when array when i equals array length 7, it's actually 6. So we can do this by testing it like this. Um, so we would we check if i is bigger than array dot length. So if i is for example six, um, it's the last image. And if it's the last image, go back to the first image. So the first image is zero because it's zero base. I think you understood arrays now. So if the array if i this value is bigger than array dot length, set it to zero. We can try this. It's, it, I think it won't be working, but you can see this one was the last image. If I press next now, maybe there has been something in the console. You can see it's still not working because it's working, but there's one image too much because we haven't set it um, minus one because the array. Um, so the last image is the sixth. Um, is is um, i equals 6. If i equals 6, it's this image. But array.length, if we test it, um, cons I think I have it saved here, is 7. So if I have the last image, which is, which is the 6th, it will um, go further until um, it's 7. So if I press again, it will go to 7, which is nothing. And if I press again, it will be bigger than array dot length, so it will be bigger than seven, and then it will jump back to zero. So we have to press minus one. We can test it. One, two, three, four, six, blah, blah. And this is the last image. If we press it now, we will jump back to the first. So we have a full loop. And now we have to do the same thing, but um, for the previous button, because if we press previous, it will not work. It will just jump to the um, to the uh, to this image, it's the last before it's the one before the last image. This one, he will just um, jump over this one, as you can see. And then we have this, but oh, and then it doesn't work. So, but <clears throat> if you really if you really want to learn JavaScript, don't look at uh, just stop the video and try to figure it out yourself. And if you don't get if you if you if you think you got it or you can't you, you can't solve it just look at the solution now 
Okay, so just press stop and I will wait one second and now I will just give you the solution. So you have to say if i is smaller than r dot length, this was kind of obvious, but what now? We will need to set if r length is, if, if i is smaller than r length, so if r is smaller than 7 um, minus r dot length, so if the if if the i value is smaller than the length of this array let's say seven because this is dynamically you can add more images and then it will still work I, of course i could just say if r is um, smaller than zero um go back to the first image uh, or, or to the last image but in this case i mean it, in, actually in this case it would still work let's just try it so if i is smaller than zero which it will be when I am um, which it will be if I am on the first image and press previous it will go to minus minus um, one because it's already this image is the this image is zero and if I press previous it will go to minus one so if it is smaller than zero just set I to be r dot length minus one so what this does is it's it's setting uh, i to be seven but we don't have a seventh image a seventh item because array is still zero based so the last image is actually the sixth one so you need to set minus one so seven minus one is six and then you will get this image we can try this set uh, press on pre uh, save and press on previous and you will get this image i'm sorry you don't actually need to 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 do to do it like this r length minus r length i don't know why I, I i have it in my code it's completely stupid but it's already a bit older this project so just set it to if i is m smaller than zero then set i to r length minus one and it works you can skip all the way to the first one and skip all the way to the first one again so this is it. It's the it's a full functioning image slider. Of course, you can add some um, animation animations and stuff and make this look way better. But all in all, this is how it could work. There are of course way better um, versions and way better styles and all of this. But this is just to get the basics of an array, for example, and um, if statements. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you could learn something. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe. Um, yes, thanks.